Batteries exploded inside a university classroom while class was still in session. Overall, I'm kind of surprised this doesn't happen more often. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. This happened last week at Portland State University around 3.30 p.m. Multiple lithium-ion batteries went into thermal runaway on the fourth floor of the engineering building. Smoke filled the hallway, students had to evacuate, but fire crews were able to rush in and quickly knock things down. But not before it shook everybody up. Was this a major incident? Not really. Could it have turned into something major? Absolutely. And honestly, it's no surprise, because this is something I've been hearing about from campuses across the country. Students doing battery-based engineering projects, sometimes without any safety measures in place at all, sometimes with little oversight, sometimes, worst case scenario, in their dorm rooms, just engineers being engineers. From what we know so far, this fire started during class, during a lab session inside the engineering building. They were working with lithium-ion batteries, something went wrong, and several of those batteries went into thermal runaway. Witnesses described explosions, and when it comes to the general public, it might be a little bit of an overreaction. But with that said, when one battery lets loose, it is a violent event that happens quickly. It could absolutely be considered an explosion. Thankfully, nobody was injured, but the building was evacuated for about two hours while that floor was ventilated. On a positive note, fire crews knew right away that lithium-ion batteries were involved. They got that information from dispatch, which it's pretty rare to get that much information from dispatch. Typically, when we go on a smoke investigation, we're ready for fire, but we might not have our SCBA on. We're not fully masked up. SCBA, self-contained breathing apparatus. It's pretty common to be walking around a building using our nose to try to figure out where that smoke is coming from. But when batteries are involved, we don't want to be doing that. In this case, because they knew the batteries were involved, they went in fully protected on air. Lithium ion battery exploding was in the in the dispatch notes. We take it quite seriously. Our first arriving chief was reminding members in our organization on the radio that they must be fully packed up as the words we use. That means all of their protective clothing is on, including gloves, their mask, hood and helmets. They did a fantastic job of keeping their crews safe. I've spoken with schools, fire marshals, and housing directors. This issue, it comes up a lot. College campuses are hotbeds for innovation, and that's awesome. But innovation often comes with experimentation. And when that involves lithium-ion batteries, the margin of error you get, it's very thin. Things can happen very quickly. Those failures can cause real-world consequences. You've got students wiring up homemade battery packs. They're building electric bikes, scooters, drones, solar storage devices. All great in theory, but many of these students are learning as they go. They're not using battery management systems. They might not understand the risk of thermal runaway or short-circuiting these devices and causing thermal runaway. And worse, sometimes they're doing this in their dorm rooms. Working on a project with two or three battery cells, not really a big deal. But once you start stringing together 20, 30, 50 of them, that's a ton of stored energy, especially in an enclosed space, especially with a bunch of combustible material nearby. These kids, they're basically creating bombs inside campus housing, and they don't even realize it. And here's the thing. It's not just a student problem. Universities often don't have policies in place for this. They don't understand the risk. Engineering departments, they love student innovation. Housing departments want to support student life as well. But between these two, there's often a big communication gap when it comes to safety. And then there's commercially available products. I've seen it firsthand. Students storing e-bike batteries under their beds, charging custom-built power banks on parkable desks. They're running extension cords under cheap rugs. I've talked to fire crews who have responded to college campuses, and we're talking small fires, nothing more than a vape. But those can turn into something major as well. So when I see an incident like the one at Portland State University, it's not that surprising. It's the kind of wake-up call that a lot of these places need. So what's the solution? First, universities need clear, enforceable safety policies for any student project involving lithium-ion batteries. That includes mandatory approval before battery-based projects can be brought on campus, supervision and risk assessments done by the faculty advisors or the lab technicians, strict bans on battery assembly or charging of large devices in dorm rooms, fire-rated charging cabinets, or storage cabinets for that matter, in areas dedicated to working with lithium-ion batteries, but most importantly, training. 
It all comes down to education. These kids need to understand that thermal runaway exists, what happens when there's venting, what happens in an emergency situation. You can't just tell students they can't do something. They need to understand the hazards of thermal runaway, so hopefully they can do things safely. Students need to be educated, not scared, just informed. A lot of these projects can be done safely with the right planning, but batteries students are using now, they're not like the same AA battery packs that we used in the 90s. They're high energy, high risk, and often repurposed from other equipment with no traceability. Innovation shouldn't be discouraged, but it shouldn't come at the cost of student safety.